I'll be very explicit about what I'm asking. If you know that there are hundreds, if not thousands, of innocent civilians in any target, whether it's a UN facility or anything, do you think that that is a legitimate target? Well, okay, two points before you say I'm not answering your question. I'm not going to stand up here and make a blanket statement about what is or is not a legitimate target. We'll take each on its face value. But the second point is that, of, as I just said to Matt, we want the Israelis to take more steps to protect civilians. We know Gaza is a very densely populated area. It's difficult. We know that, too. Uh, but we do think they need to take more steps. And look, when you see uh, a school, an UNRWA school, another one being shelled, reportedly having innocent uh, civilians, including children, killed, it is pretty disturbing. So we'll continue having the conversation. Mary, uh, are you yeah. aware of the number of Palestinians that are in UNRWA schools? That are under? Uh, that are actually in UN facilities? I, I don't schools. have a number for you, okay. say. They you may have one. Are you aware that the head of UNHCR and UNRWA in Gaza just issued a statement that none of the schools where Palestinians are taking shelter had actually rockets in them? Are you aware of that? Well, I hadn't just seen the thing. statement. As okay. I said, I can't confirm that they did. We're trying to get all the facts okay. right now. And let me ask you something. They also said that the, the, the shell that hit the school was 155 millimeter shell, which is only the Israelis have. So why can't you determine that? Because we ha don't have all the facts yet, Saeed. Okay. There's conflicting reports, and we want to get all the facts before we make statements. Okay, let me just let me just follow sorry, up. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's do one at a time. What is the conflict? No, well, what's the conflicting Saeed's report? Finish, and then I'll go to you, Matt. Go ahead, Saeed. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, go ahead. What is the conflicting report? That's a good question. Well, we've... <laughs> okay, so you just leave, and so everyone you else can ask the question. <laughs> yeah. No, everyone gets to ask in order. Mm. Nobody gets to interrupt people. Yeah. So, look, we've seen an the Israelis have at times throughout this conflict, when we've talked about particularly the last UNRWA school, there are conflicting reports they've said, they've done their investigations, there are certain reports coming out from the ground, there are different numbers of casualties, there are just conflicting reports about exactly what was in the school, what happened to it, and the number of casualties. But Mary, this, uh, this is becoming... But you have to sort out those conflicting reports. I understand that there's some, there may be some conflict, but this is becoming a daily ritual. I mean, the, the, the Israelis drop leaflets telling the Palestinians to evacuate, they take shelter in these facilities. Then they, they are targeted. You know, parks are targeted, hospitals are targeted, and you know, all these things are targeted. Pretty soon you're not going to have any space where, where they are going to go. Where should they go? Look, as I said, the UN has done um, remarkable work here with really overflowing facilities. So we know this is a huge humanitarian challenge. That's exactly the reason, Saeed, we are, the Secretary is working to put in place a humanitarian ceasefire so we can get uh, medical supplies and food and water uh, to the people of Gaza who are suffering. And how far along are you with the, with the effort to have a humanitarian ceasefire in place? The Secretary is continuing his efforts to see if the parties are willing to agree to an unconditional humanitarian ceasefire, the last, you know, long enough for serious negotiations to begin in Cairo, um, and also to get some urgently needed uh, humanitarian assistance to Gaza. Uh, so, look, this is a proposal uh, we are discussing with the parties. We've uh, hopefully need to make a little more progress, but obviously there's some more work to do, Saeed. You know, the Israelis announced a four-hour humanitarian ceasefire, yet they bombed the uh, aerial bombardment. They continued aerial bo uh, bombardment where dozens were killed during that time. Do you have any comment on that? Well, what we're, we're working for is an unconditional humanitarian ceasefire. It takes two parties to agree to that, and we obviously haven't had that in place yet. Last week, Ambassador uh -huh. Dermer argued before a group of reporters that UN facilities are off limits unless they believe that there are weapons inside, regardless of whether there are people inside. Are the Israelis correct to be making this argument that under the law of war, that targeting a facility that is supposed to be neutral ground is in fact legal? Well, look, we think it's very important. Uh, UN neutrality is a very important principle. I'm not going to make a broader international legal judgment, but we believe uh, that UN facilities are neutral and that people should not be targeted in them. In light of these uh, repeated shellings on facilities that are supposed to be neutral, given the U.S.'s position as a member of the P5 mm -hmm. on the Security Council, has the ambassador or someone from the embassy been called in for more uh, intensive personal discussions about this incident? Uh, well, I don't have any meeting updates to share about this specific incident, but I can assure you that we've been in close contact with Ambassador Dermer with many senior Israeli officials, including at the secretary's level, over the past weeks, days, hours, all of the above. And then one more. Uh, you keep saying that we need to sort out the facts on the ground. Mm -hmm. Given that uh, we're talking about two entities that are essentially at war with each other, a government and a terrorist group, whom do you believe if they're both doing their investigations? Well, 
Well, we attempt to get uh, our own facts, Roz, and that's why we don't just take any one person's word for it. Uh, we see what the facts are coming out of the ground. We have a number of ways to do that, including by talking to the parties, but also getting our own information as well. And that's why we don't rush to judgment or just make statements before we can back it up. Are you suggesting that U.S. personnel are inside Gaza doing their own ground assessments? I wasn't suggesting that. I said there's a variety of ways we can get our own information. I was not suggesting that. Uh, Madam, how can you stop innocent killings in the future at the U.N. facilities around the globe, not only this here? Are you talking at the United Nations uh, they, uh, that uh, they have they are they have a responsibility to check it out what they have in, in their facilities and all that because people are this is not the first in incident at the United Nations facilities around the globe have been many. Yeah, no, it's a good question. We certainly talked to the United Nations about this because look, they don't want their facilities targeted uh, either. <laughs> I think probably more than anyone else. So we talked to them about it. We've talked to them about what they should do. We've tried, you know, the Secretary General has been very focused on the issue of what they should do if they find rockets in their school. They're making progress there. So again, it's a very tough operating environment and we'll keep working with them. Uh -huh. How do you hold people accountable for these sorts of attacks? Well, look, I, I don't think, I mean, I understand the question, but what we're focused on because of not just this attack, but others, and what the Secretary is focused on is right now getting a ceasefire in place. We need all of the attacks to stop. So we can get humanitarian assistance in, so we can set the, the groundwork for negotiations in Cairo for a longer ceasefire. So obviously that's what we're focused on in the immediate term. And that's what he's working towards. He's had another you know, dozen phone calls today on just this issue. What kind of a, what kind of a system or protocol you have uh, working to determine whether the Israelis are in fact deliberately targeting Palestinian civilians? Well, so and, we have and a should there be a consequence? We have a number of ways of looking at getting the facts on the ground. I just don't have more on that for you. Israel says that it's right. And then Margaret, yeah, go ahead and then I'll go to Okay, Margaret. so yeah. Israel has long said that it has the right to self-defense. Of course, you've echoed that sentiment. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it, they've said this throughout this conflict. And even uh, up until now, we have 1,200 people, over 1,200 people that have been uh, killed, thousands more that have been injured. Is there going to be a point um, where you say, you know, this enormous amount of casualties uh, is not justified? Uh, anymore. I mean, will you condemn Israel? Look, uh, a lot of what you just said is true. And the first part, I'll start with the first part, that Israel does have a right to defend itself. If you lived in a city where rockets were coming from terrorists repeatedly, where you had to run to a bomb shelter uh, repeatedly, I think you'd probably feel pretty strongly uh, that Israel has a right to defend itself. We've announced again this week additional funding for the Iron Dome system, which does exactly this. But we have said that uh, in their efforts, to fight this threat, they do need to take additional steps to prevent civilian casualties. We know it's a challenging operating environment. We know it's very densely populated. You know, we, throughout conflicts we've fought in our history, have taken extraordinary steps in Afghanistan and Iraq to prevent civilian casualties, and we've called on the Israelis to do more. So we're going to continue having the conversation. One more question. Um, uh, today, the Israeli military offered a four-hour humanitarian um, ceasefire in specific areas of the Gaza Strip. Now, Hamas dismissed that partial temporary ceasefire because they said um, it didn't give them enough relief in the areas that they needed in order to <coughs> collect casualties and so on and so forth. What What's your take on that partial ceasefire? Well, we're, we're focused on... <coughs> excuse me. Give me one second. <coughs> What we're focused on is an unconditional humanitarian ceasefire that lasts long enough <clears throat> to allow for serious negotiations to begin in Cairo and for urgently needed humanitarian assistance to get in. So obviously that's longer than four hours. So we're working with the parties on what that might look like. Okay. Sorry. Marie, yep, or go to Margaret first. Yeah. Marie, on a, a, from a policy <laughs> perspective, is there any consideration or conversation about making some of the military aid conditional, given that you are calling on Israel to also hold fire and to pull back here? I haven't heard that at all mentioned. So when you talked about um, further aid for Iron Dome, that is mm -hmm. a defensive system, mm -hmm. but resupplying ammunition, other things are offensive mm -hmm. uh, materials. And there are reports that the U.S. is resupplying Israel with ammunition. Is that I can check clear on those specifics. and correct? Yeah, well, let me check with my uh, mm -hmm. colleagues at the Department of Defense and see. I just don't know the answer. That would seem to be inconsistent with the position of calling right. on all sides to pull let back. Let me check on what the facts are. Isn't, it, isn't this a kind of State Department, political, military? It would be a combination of both, so I'm happy to check. So apparently there are 120-millimeter mortar rounds, 40-millimeter ammunition for grenade launchers, 
coming from the Pentagon's war reserve stockpile ammunition Pentagon Israel program. Being the keyword that you just said. Excuse me? Pentagon? Being the keyword. I'll check with the Pentagon. I know, and but I'll it's, check it's with a my U.S. It's a State Department decision, I think. I understand that. Right? Let me check and see what the details are. No, but you are you're comfortable sending resupplying these we this weapon. I don't even know if that's happening. Right. I'm happy to check. Can I, with you s in, the, in the White House statement, and I'm sorry, I can't remember if you mm -hmm. actually repeated this part, but it says that the U.S. is particularly concerned that Palestinians who have been told by the IDF to, to leave their homes mm -hmm. are going to these U.N. designated shelters and they're not safe. Correct, yes. We are extremely concerned that thousands of internally displaced Palestinians who have been called on by the Israeli military to evacuate their homes are not safe. Uh, in UN designated shelters in Gaza, this is you, extremely concerning to us. Right, it's extremely concern. Uh -huh. It's extremely concerning and understandable. But, but why is it that they're not safe? Well, because we've seen. Uh, unfortunately is it because of the Israelis or is it because of Hamas? Well, I th at a root cause, Matt. Look, the reason that these civilians are unsafe is because Hamas has had a pattern of hiding weapons, of hiding fighters in these schools. So that Hamas has put these civilians at risk. Now we're still getting the facts about exactly what has happened, and there have been conflicting reports. You can choose not to believe them, but there have been conflicting reports about who has shelled these schools. But clearly, these civilians are at risk. Well, but if you if you're if you're saying that it's, I'm not sure how you can say that. And at the same time, if you say that Hamas is putting these people at <coughs> risk, and you still condemn. The shelling, it mm -hmm. seems to be, it doesn't seem to, 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 to follow logically. Why? Well, because if, if, in fact, you say that Hamas has put these people at risk, that would suggest that you think that, 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 it's, a legit, that it's a legitimate target. I'm not Am saying I, that at all. Okay. I'm saying that Hamas's actions have put people at risk. Um, and then, doesn't mean it's okay for the UN's neutrality to be violated. By anybody. By anybody. Right. Like, All right. Who who is it that you want to do this investigation? Is it okay if with you guys if it's the Israelis alone, or does does there need to be some kind of international component to well, it? Well, I don't I don't have anything specific in terms of a formal investigation, but I, I think it needs to be broader than than just one side here. I think it needs to obviously we are undertaking our own information gathering. Uh, we talk to the parties. We try and get the facts, uh, but I, I don't think it should just be any one. Uh, party to this. Okay, so you would not be comfortable then with Israel just investigating on its own and coming to some conclusion? And well, they're certainly correct? free to, but I think that we would uh, make our own judgments and not just base our judgments on also, that. Also, don't you think there's kind of a difference of opinion, regardless of, of whether, well, I mean, I guess it, if in fact it, it was Israelis that um, um, hit the school, that there's a difference of opinions on whether um, a UN facility is a legitimate target because according the Israel's maintain that this is a target because they're going after these rockets uh, right we'll see what comes out when we look in and get the facts here at least but it does seem that sometimes there are difference of opinions here a couple hours after the this this shelling incident there was another incident at a marketplace which apparently has also killed in the teens uh, of people now this was not a UN facility but mm -hmm. uh, it appears from some of the reports and that uh, the, the people who or most of the people who were killed and wounded there were civilians. It, it, is the administration prepared to condemn an attack like that? I, I, I actually am familiar with that specific okay, incident. Okay, well then, in previous, uh, in previous attacks on non or previous shelling incidents on non UNRWA mm -hmm. um, facilities where civilians have been killed. Is the administration prepared to retroactively condemn those shelling incidents as well? Because you haven't so thus far. You have, until today, right. said you're expressed deep concern and mm -hmm. said that you would like the Israelis to do more. But I'm wondering if, you're, if the administration is prepared to go retroactively since the beginning of this conflict to condemn all inc incidents where um, there have been civilian casualties. I don't think I'm going to go that far, Matt. And in part, look, we understand that um, the Israelis have said they have very high standards. We believe they could do more. Um, but this is, uh, unfortunately, a conflict zone. And sometimes uh, civilians tragically are, are uh, injured or killed. That's why we've called on the Israelis to do more to protect them. So I don't want to make a blanket statement. Um, again, that's why the Secretary is so focused on getting a ceasefire in place so it stops on all sides. Last, la last week you um, uh, said after the vote at the Human Rights uh, Commission 
that the United States was proud to stand with Israel and, and would, even if it meant standing um, alone. Uh -huh. That is still the case today? Absolutely. Um, and then one, just one, okay. Can I just follow up on that particular point? Mm -hmm. I understand that this resolution at the UN Human Rights Council was completely one-sided and biased, mm -hmm. okay? So I would understand that you sided with Israel on that. Mm -hmm. And it did not take into account Hamas's role in this conflict, mm -hmm. any, you know, discussion of them using, storing weapons and mm -hmm. facilities or using human shields. So that's fine. But are you saying that no matter whether Israel is right or wrong, I mean, even if they're, you know, 100% wrong, are you saying that you would still side with Israel um, against the international community just because Israel is a good friend? I mean, at least that's a huge hypothetical. I don't even know well, how to begin. As if a lot of times I don't even know how to begin that. to address. Mm -hmm. I think we have too often seen in the international community that Israel has been singled out. That they have, I agree with you. 100%. And 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 that's why we have uh, uh, stood by them uh, against that. And so, look, that's a huge hypothetical. I don't even want to venture to guess, but we have. Uh, felt that it was important to stand by them in these international fora when this has happened, like we saw last <laughs> but week. But if the United Nations, and it does look as if it, you know, the UN, although they haven't been able to do anything kind of balanced and fair and, you know, mm -hmm. and, and insert themselves into the conflict, um, if the United Nations were to take up some kind of remedy or address or a statement that were to condemn both sides, or were to take into account the responsibilities of both sides, are you saying that you would sign on to that? It's a good question. I think we have to look at what the language actually said before we can make a decision. But I mean, do you think, I mean, clearly Israel has been singled out by the United Nations, uh, you know, multiple, more than multiple decades. times over years, yeah. yes. But does that absolve them of any type, just because they've been, you know, singled out, that doesn't absolve them of, of any responsibility here? No, not at all. Are you undertaking any independent action to determine whether these allegations of having rockets and ammunition in the schools are true or not? Well, as I said, we're uh, fact-finding and gathering information from a variety of are you, sources. Are you sending a commission? How are you fact-finding? I don't have anything uh, formal like that to announce or, or to preview, but again, we're trying to get more information. Mm -hmm. Anything else on Gaza? Yeah, one more okay. thing. And then we'll go to um, And so you believe that all Israel's assaults on Gaza are justifiable, right? Just I, I have not said that sense. in any way from this podium. You're putting okay. words in Like how much of it, like 90%? Uh, I'm 95? not going to put a percent on it. As okay. I said, they have the right to defend themselves, and we'll look at each incident okay. on its own merit. No, you, honestly, like one could, when when they ask you whether the, you, own, you know, the argument the United States puts forward is the same argument as Israel, is that it's doing so in self-defense. <laughs> So why is it in self-defense? Because Hamas fires rockets, Correct. right? Okay. Well, if you were living so, in a city where you had to run to your bomb shelter because rockets okay. were, I think you probably but don't feel you like think, you need to defend yourself. Don't you think I could you be wrong. Don't right. you think you should also question the proportionality of the Israeli response? Well, as I said, like, the Israelis need to do more to prevent civilian casualties. I think mm -hmm. I've made that pretty clear. And like thanks to the Iron Dome missiles, you know, like really Hamas rockets pose almost no real threat that to Israel. That is a completely false statement. I would, it's be, careful. Like relatively I, low I would be careful making those statements. It's a dangerous statement to make, actually. Iron Dome has been very successful. But two civilians have been killed so after firing hundreds of missiles. OK, let's Rockets. be clear, though. Hamas is still a very real threat to Israel. Um, two things. First of all, I just want to point out, back on the AMO issue, I mean, the State Department needs to give it permission to these sales. So if you can just I'll check. Yeah, what, I really, guys, I really just don't know the facts. Yeah. So I will check. And then, I mean, just back to what um, my colleague was saying, I mean, Iron Dome, you know, that's something that you did with Israel. I mean, what mm -hmm. are, what kind of things is the United States prepared to do or is thinking about, or do you have any ideas on how you can protect um, Palestinian civilians from both mm -hmm. Israel and the kind of residuals? Mm -hmm. um, actions of Hamas. Well, I, I hate to keep going back to this, but a ceasefire is the best way to do that. And that's why the secretary's putting so much Yeah, but so in the absence behind. of a ceasefire. Well, in the absence of a ceasefire, there are going to be a lot of civilians still at risk. So there's there's not an option here that's absent a ceasefire. But going forward, obviously, uh, one of the reasons the secretary uh, has worked very hard on issues like Middle East peace, but also here on this specific issue and what a longer term ceasefire might look like, is because we know there's a very real ongoing threat from Hamas, and we know that the citizens of Gaza 
uh, are unfortunately put in the middle of this conflict. So you, that's why we're working on a longer-term solution. Are you talking well. to any of the neighboring countries about perhaps taking in Palestinian civilians as, as um, refugees? Not that I've heard, uh, Elise. I'm happy to check. Can you check? This is uh, Arsenal. The Israeli military intelligence estimated that they have at this point fewer than 3,000 rockets, and obviously because of various other political incidents, they don't have the same relationships with their suppliers that they used to have. Mm -hmm. Is there any sense that this conflict could be coming to an end simply because Hamas is running out of ammunition, as it were? Well, I can't confirm those numbers. I just don't know if they're true or not. Hamas remains a very real threat, but obviously it would be the goal, ultimately, that Hamas is no longer able to threaten Israel. But all you have to see is the rockets continuing to fly in to, to see that it is, still remains today a very real threat. Do you know, do you have any reason to doubt the UNRWA version of events? We're still trying to get the facts here, Matt. Uh, that's that's great, but that's not my question. Do you have any reason to doubt their version? I, of I don't have a way to answer that yes or no because we don't have all the facts yet. I, they've put out a statement, and I just can't make a judgment on it. Can, can I ask? Um, um, I have a quick one on Syria, and then. Um, no, oh, sorry, you want to more on Israel? Yeah. Okay. We'll not on that. not on not on this specifically, okay. but about um, the 15-year-old American Palestinian American kid who's in been held. Do you have an, is there any update on him? No update. Um, and then I wanted to know more broadly, yesterday we all saw this purported transcript uh -huh. of the President's yeah. call with Prime Minister Netanyahu, which both the White House and uh, the One Prime of Minister's the office I've ever seen, denied. To be frank. Um, is the administration concerned at all that there are people in Israel, whether they're government officials or others, who are trying to um, hurt the U.S. Israel relationship, particularly between the administration of this president and, the, and Israel? Well, Matt, I think in general over the past few days, it has been really shocking and I think frankly disappointing for some of the personal attacks we've seen on Secretary Kerry, some of the absurd accusations made about his intentions, and then yesterday this crazy, you know, completely fabricated transcript that bore no responsibility in any way to reality. So there's clearly um, people, I don't know who, and I don't want to guess, because I'm not in a position to do that, who are putting out false and defamatory and, and absurd information about our intentions on this side, uh, certainly with Secretary Kerry and the President. So it's deeply concerning to us and it's disappointing because everything we have done, whether it's Iron Dome, whether it's the hours and hours the Secretary has put into the peace process or even just getting a ceasefire in place, has been designed to protect Israel's security. So whoever it is, you know, I don't want to guess what their motives are, but it is, it is concerning and it's disappointing. All right. Is it also – hold on. Is it also disappointing and upsetting that members of Congress are doing this – are saying the same thing virtually? I mean, not virtually. They are. They're wow. saying in, in some cases they're even more critical than what we have heard um, from, from Israel. Absolutely. I think it's disappointing. I think it's concerning. And I think it's wrong. Why do you, th why do you think that is, that members of Congress are doing that? Well, I mean, right. Israel we can understand, but I, why are members of Congress blasting the efforts of the Secretary of State to bring peace to the Middle East? I, I don't make a blanket statement here without having seen all of their comments. Many members of Congress, I think, like to use Israel as a political issue to try to divide the country, and we have always said Israel and support for Israel should not be a political issue. It should not be a partisan issue, uh, because it's not. And so I think often it's used in that context. And I think that's been disappointing, and I don't want to venture to guess why all of them might be doing this. Do you think that? Do you think that those actions of what you just said, mm -hmm. using Israel as a political tool, does that hamper sometimes your ability to use all the tools in the diplomatic toolbox? Um, you know, it's a good question, Elise. I, I think a couple points. The first is it certainly hasn't hampered our efforts to provide unprecedented levels of funding to Israel for its security. Uh, again, I keep going back to Iron Dome, but it really was is is a remarkable system that we helped develop and well, certainly that's in funded. Support of Israel. Exactly. I'm saying, exactly. I'm saying, do you so it hasn't hampered that. But to, has it hampered you from being able to kind of give Israel any the kind of tough messages or or tough policy options that you might have because Congress is such a key in support of Israel? No, I mean, I, I actually I don't think so. I think we've been very clear with the Israelis when uh, there are issues. Uh, when we have concerns, when we raise them, we do so privately, but I think we've been very clear about that. And look, I, I think the partisan noise you hear sometimes back in Washington, um, Secretary is certainly uh, familiar with that kind of, of 
partisan yeah. noise, and, and I think it's really it's, able to tune is it Is it really partisan, though? It seems Much like... Much of it is well, quite but, partisan. No, no, but what I'm saying is... Or political in nature. It's political, but it's not partisan, because both sides of the aisle... It's often... Check it out, but it is often fairly partisan. What? Are you saying that, like, people in Congress are trying to compete for who's more pro-Israel? I, I think that uh, I think that many of the criticisms this administration gets, both on our policy towards Israel and in general on foreign policy, tends to come from the other side of the aisle. Well, going back to motives, uh, given uh, the uh, stratospheric uh, poll ratings that the Netanyahu government is getting right now, couldn't it be argued, as some Israeli analysts have, that a lot of this criticism is being done for domestic political consumption? And if so, why shouldn't this administration just ignore it? Well, as I just said, I think that a lot of the rhetoric, unfortunately, in this country about Israel is done for political and for partisan reasons. The Secretary is not focused on that. He's focused on what's best for the security of Israel and how we can get a ceasefire in place. But that was suggested in reference to the U.S. Congress. This isn't in reference to the Israeli body politic. I, I'm is, sorry, is Ross, that, I don't that, understand is, your question. Is that the same? Are you making the same point that uh, some of this criticism, some of these leaks, some of these whispers in the mm -hmm. Israeli press and to the U.S. press, frankly, is designed to boost Netanyahu's hold on power. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to guess about that kind of political intention. But I do. There, what else can you? What else can you assume from a completely fabricated quote transcript that in no way resembled reality that was leaked to an Israeli news outlet? I don't know what else you can assume about the intentions except that they're designed to hurt our relationship. Now I don't know towards what end. I don't know who did it, but I don't know what other. What other conclusion you can draw from that? What other conclusion you can draw from respected voices in Israel talking about the Secretary of State, claiming he supports Hamas, which is offensive and absurd? I, you know, I th Do you think that this is coming from the... I'm sorry. Sorry, Roz. No, it's okay. Do you think that this is coming just from the press and, like, Israeli systems? This is coming from Israeli officials that are speaking on background. I don't well, you, Yes, I, it's in the article. I, I leave it's, it to you all to, to determine your It's in your the article are. saying that these sources are coming from the U. This is criticism of the Israeli government that's being planted in the Israeli well, press. Have you talked to the Israelis And I would say it? that kind of criticism coming from any ally... Certainly Israel just really has no place in this discussion. You also heard Ambassador Dermer out this morning on TV talking about actually condemning some of his well, criticism. That was after well. three days of negative articles about how John Kerry is a strategic <laughs> terrorist attack. Well, and I think, quite frankly, that those articles, whoever puts that out there, I mean, it's just... It's does so that, disappointing. Does that always. hurt equally, like, burn even particularly more considering the, like, unequivocal support that you've given Israel, especially considering what we talked about at the U.N.? That kind of that a that you've stand absolutely. that you stood with Israel alone in the international absolutely. community. Absolutely, that the level of support this administration has given has given Israel has been quite frankly unprecedented in our history. Uh, that we have stood by them even when we stood alone, even in very tough times, and we are um, proud to do so. I think that and the secretary, the hours all of us have spent with the secretary in Jerusalem, and you know, trying to get Middle East peace, trying to work to protect Israel's security. I think that's why it's so disappointing, that it's just so at odds with reality, and, and quite frankly, just flies in the face of everything we've been trying to do. Marie, you just said that, again, again that you're, you, you stand with Israel and, quote, we are proud to do so. We are. Even after a, 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 an incident like today, <coughs> which you have condemned without blame, but even after Calling, set, tell, saying that Israel has not lived up to its own high standards. Well, both can be true. You're, okay, and you're and you're comfortable with the with 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 Israel not living up to its own high standards. I didn't say that. But using weaponry that's been supplied by the United States is that correct? We have a very broad relationship with Israel to help it defend itself. I will check on the specifics about the resupply. But yes, we are very committed to their security. Right. That's why these vicious attacks on the secretary are just crazy. Right. Well, it's one thing to be very con committed to their security, but it's another thing to, to stand silent when, even if it's accidental... I think I've been anything but silent. Well, no, no, no. Even when definition. it's a accidental, that you, that when, when there are these large numbers of civilian casualties, right? Well, I haven't I mean, been silent on civilian casualties. Well, but you but you have made a specific point that you're not condemning Israel for this latest incident. Because we aren't sure right. of the facts okay. here. Now, listen, I, when I mentioned the call, I wasn't trying to get into this whole political thing. I wanted to actually talk about in in the call, and but 
more specifically, Secretary Kerry has had presumably similar conversations with Prime Minister Netanyahu, and I, that was what I want to get into. Well, not similar, because that had no... No, no, I mean, whatever... Phone conversation. The, the real conversation yes. pres between the President and the Prime Minister, presumably mm -hmm. Secretary Kerry has had similar conversations to that. With This, trans this, this faux, faux transcript that you, you say talks about how Qatar and Turkey need to be interlocutors in bringing Hamas to the table. Whether or not the transcript is false or not, that is something that the United States agrees with, right? But I, I mean, I, I want to make very clear. No, but this, I, I don't want to actually tee off of this transcript to ask substantive questions because it is so ridiculous. Okay, well, then let me put Let's it this way. Let's just ask right. the questions aside from the I forget, forget about the transcript. Okay, thank you. Do you, <laughs> um, do you believe that the cooperation or help of Turkey and Gutter is going to be uh, is key, is critical yes. to getting Hamas on board with a ceasefire. Yes, and the Secretary has spoken to the Qatari Foreign Minister uh, three times today, also to the Turkish Foreign Minister as well, and numerous times over the past week. Okay. Is it not a fact that Israel has expressed reservations about involving both the Turks and the Qataris in this process and has said that they think that the Egyptian, the, 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 that it undercuts both them and the Egyptians. Well, we belie believe, excuse me, obviously the Egyptians are leading here. That's why we're talking about bringing people to Cairo right. for a negotiation. Right. But the fact is it takes two to have a ceasefire, and we need to get Hamas to yes here. Right. And there aren't that many people that have influence with Hamas. So is it correct in, your conver in the Secretary's conversations with the Israelis that he has said uh, or made the case that Israel really isn't in a position here to be able to choose who it wants to mediate because... That's not the who, tone of the conversation, Matt. Well, I, I'm not, I didn't, don't think I ascribed any tone to it at all. I'm, being, well, I'm well, trying to do it flat and that, monotone. Well, that, was, that any, was a very, that had a, um, it, that was not a flat statement. Let me put it, let me put it this way. Has the United States told Israel that it cannot choose who it wants to mediate or to be involved on in, in bringing Hamas on board. That's that's not how I would describe the conversation. To I, be clear, the is so I'm saying no. The Israelis are supportive of our efforts here. Not what? To, bring in Turkey to get a ceasefire, and they're supportive in general of the way Wait, we are going about doing that. Yesterday, the secretary said that <clears throat> Prime Minister Netanyahu had himself had asked mm -hmm. him to arrange a humanitarian ceasefire. Mm -hmm. Officials in the prime minister's office say that just isn't true. I'm so gonna stick with my boss. So, what, when you that. say that Israel is supportive of your efforts to that, what, what's the evidence for, for that? Well, the secretary has been in close communication with them over many, many days, and they are working very closely with us on what a ceasefire might look like. So they're clearly part of this process, and they are working with us uh, to try to get everyone to yes here. Well, the I, I, okay, but the problem is that the other thing the secretary they're said was that in the, process the, with the secretary. But the, but the secretary said that he was working, he was doing this, and the president, President Obama, was supporting him in doing this mm -hmm. because of Prime Minister Netanyahu's quote commitment to a ceasefire. Mm -hmm. And then he said that that's what he has. Uh, he's going to take that at face value. But if there's something, you know, if if he talked about somebody playing a game here, mm -hmm. um, is that possible? Do you think that the Israelis could be saying, telling him one thing? Uh, privately, and then saying something, uh, whispering something else, com uh, completely I different. Think that the behind Israeli his government is very focused at a number of levels uh, with working with the sec on working with the secretary to get a ceasefire. Okay. Here. I now, I know you don't want to talk about the alleged transcript, but uh, I'll um, talk about I, it. Okay. It's uh, crap. One, one of the things was <laughs> <laughs> complete term. crap. Complete That's crap. a dipl yeah. diplomatic that technical uh, term. term there. Uh, in it, the president is, <laughs> is. The, the president was I'm quoted sorry. as saying that he... The transcript of the call between Prime Minister Netanyahu and the president. That he was, uh, said that he trusts Turkey <laughs> and Gutter to be honest brokers. Why are you this, going back to a totally this. false Well, I want to know, I, I just want to know, it raises the question, does the administration believe that Turkey and Gutter are honest brokers, that they are able, that... That, that they can do this job and that they deserve to be trusted. I mean, you know, the Israelis have reason to be very suspicious of trust. Turkey. It's really not about trust. Well, okay. Not. And we have spoken out 
To be fair, when Turkey has made some comments, leaders in Turkey, right. about how that diminishes their ability to play to play a role here. So we have spoken out about that over the past okay. days and weeks. But, but then why are you relying on them so heavily if their role has been them. diminished? The Egyptians have the lead in this process here. Um, but look, there are only a number of countries that have any influence with Hamas. And we need to get them to yes to have a ceasefire. So <coughs> does that mean we talk to the Turks and the Qataris? It's not about trust. It's about getting a terrorist organization to agree to a ceasefire. But That's a complicated it, thing. It's also do. about them being a productive actor. I mean, if you're going to Qatar and Qatar is holding out um, and urging Hamas not to take a ceasefire because it thinks it could get more things, then maybe that's not... I think what, what Israel is maintaining is that Qatar is not only acting as a conduit and mm -hmm. a kind of liaison or intermediary with Hamas, but is trying to um, you know, get the most for Hamas, to, is a friend of Hamas. No, I, is, I understand is, the question. Is basically there's no difference that they maintain negotiating with Hamas or negotiating with Qatar. Well, I would strongly disagree with that. And look, I do think we believe the Egyptians, the UN, our other partners are working on this to get to a ceasefire. We do believe that the partners we're working with want to get to a ceasefire. And what that looks like is obviously something that's, at the end of the day, up to the two sides here. Um, but we have put ideas on the table. I think we've made some progress, but again, not enough yet, clearly. <coughs> Any more on India. Gaza? Well, can I just ask a quick question yeah. on um, Syria, we'll move on. on your oh, yeah. humanitarian aid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do um, you know, this is a lot of money. Yes. Um, and I understand you did a small breakdown of like where it's going uh -huh. in terms of location. But it is a lot of money, and I mean, are you concerned? Could you break down a little bit who it's going through? Because there is a serious concern okay, that this money question. in such large quantities could fall into the wrong hands and, and, you know, a lot of it would disappear. Well, it's part of um, the implementation of UN Security Council so Resolution 2165. So is it a UN appeal? I'm sorry? Is it a UN appeal? Well, it's part of the full implementation. It's not, it's a little bit separate from it as well. Let me see if there's more specifics about what NGOs and, and what specifically at the UN this is going to. At least we put out a fact sheet, so I'm not sure. If yeah, there. I don't think that really okay, addressed it. But, I mean, I, I would assume some of it is going to UN organizations like UNHCR Correct. and all that stuff. And, and we, but have, I, we I would vet people, and look, when we give them to right. NGOs, we vet them very Right. Thoroughly. Yeah, but if you could do more of a breakdown Let me see of what that. I can get.